Hello, welcome back. This video we're going to talk mostly about transforming our objects. So that refers to either moving, which is referred to as translating, scaling or rotating our objects. So objects are selected with a right click. So you'll see if I put the mouse over here, which is the scene camera, right click will make it turn orange to indicate it's our active selection. The camera is the point at from which we render or take a picture of our scene. That's where it gets taken from. Holding down shift and clicking on objects will either add or remove them from the selection. The bottom left of the 3D view shows the name of the object we have selected. We can call these whatever we want, but by default we have objects called camera, a cube, which is our 3D model, and lamp over here. In this case the lamp would be lighting the scene so our camera can see it. In the outliner, objects are selected with a left click because right click gives us a bunch of options that we can perform on multiple objects. Uh, so in this case, clicking the object name will select it and clicking elsewhere on the same row will select or deselect that row and the options shown in right click menu will uh, apply to all those objects. So we'll talk more about things in the outliner kind of when we need to. A quick word on how the 3D view is organized then, we have several axes shown by these red and green lines on the grid. So the axes are X, Y and Z which correspond to the colors red, green and blue. So the X axis will run left to right when we're looking from the front and the Y axis will then be what I'll refer to as depth. So we'll be looking down the Y axis from a front view and the Z axis will be height, so from front or side views uh, that will be running up and down the screen. You'll only see the Z axis when using for example a front view with number pad 1 and then switching to orthographic mode with number pad 5. The corner of the 3D view also has a small representation of our current viewing angle to help us decide which axis we might want to move an object along if it's sort of unclear at any time. Now we'll be discussing rotating objects at some point, so I'd like to use an object where it's more clear which way things are rotating, so I want to remove the cube. As Blender is very much hotkey driven, I'll be using those, but I'll try to point out at least once where the option is found in the user interface. So many actions can be performed from buttons in the tool region, so for example if I look on the left, remember that region can be shown or hidden with the T key or by using the view menu option. I can find in the Tools tab the option Delete. Hovering over these in most cases will give a short explanation of what it does and also a reminder of the hotkey. So in this case we can see that the hotkey is X. So with the mouse in the 3D view I will first make sure to unselect everything by pressing A. This is the toggle to select or deselect all in the 3D view. So if I have a selection already A will deselect everything. If nothing is selected it will select everything. At selection tools are generally found in the select menu of the 3D view and you can see there uh, this option and a tooltip uh, reminder of the hotkey on the right. So I've made sure I don't have anything I didn't want selected. I'll select the cube with a right click, I'll press X to delete it and confirm. I want to add a new object now but a quick word about the little thing in the middle. That is the 3D cursor and it has many uses for example to serve as a snapping, scaling or pivot point for rotation but in our case it's interesting because it serves as the point at which objects are added into the scene. It can be placed within the scene with a left click but I want to make sure that it's in the middle before we add our new object. So we could find in the object menu the snap options because we want to snap the cursor to the center. There's a reminder of the hotkey there, shift s, so I'll use that in the 3D view to access the menu and snap the cursor to the center. A quick tip, shift c will also snap the cursor to the center and it'll sort of orientate the view to show everything uh, in the scene. So don't worry if you can't remember these straight away, I'll be sure to call out hotkeys as I use them in the future and eventually they'll sink in. So we want to add a new object now, we can do that in three ways. Find the object we want to add in the create tab of the tool region. We can find it in the add menu of the 3D view or a hotkey, a reminder here what the shortcut is, it's shift A. So in the 3D view I'll press shift A and choose a mesh object, it's going to be monkey. This is Blender's sort of mascot, her name is Suzanne. Let's move Suzanne about. 
There are roughly three or four ways to do this. Firstly, in the Tools tab, we can find Translate. Pressing that will put us into Translate mode, and we can move her about with the mouse. You'll notice my cursor leaving the screen and kind of warping to the other side. Remember, this is the continuous grab option in the user preferences. So I'd say really, if you want to use these buttons, that option is an absolute must. If we right click, we can cancel the current movement and the object will snap back to its starting position. We can also use the 3D view manipulators. The red, green and blue arrows here have a white circle at the center. So clicking and holding with the left mouse on the white circle will pick the object up. And we have to keep the mouse held down though, as releasing the left mouse will drop the object. Tapping right mouse while still holding onto the object will cancel. It's also possible to enter translate mode by holding right mouse somewhere on the screen and dragging a certain distance will pick the object up. This is called tweak. Of course, there's a hotkey for translate, which is G. So pressing G will grab the object, left click will confirm and right click will cancel. If you want to undo, you can use control Z. Often it's the case we want to move an object along a specific axis or axes. Now for that, the manipulators can be used. We can left click and drag on the blue arrow, for example, that will move the object along the Z axis, on the green, the Y axis, and the red, the X axis. To do this using hotkeys or the translate button, simply press the axis you wish to constrain to whilst in grab or translate mode. So for example, I press G to grab, I can press X to constrain to the X axis, Y to move along the Y axis, and Z to use the Z axis. In order to move along, say, only X and Y, but not Z, we cancel out the Z axis by using the shift key. So for example, I press G and then shift Z will move along everything except Z, so in this case, X and Y. The same thing can be said for rotating and scaling. There are manipulators available for those modes, so on the header of the 3D view, we could choose the rotate manipulators. It's also possible to shift click these and have multiple modes available there if you really want. And again, the red axis will rotate around X, the Y around, uh, green around the Y, and blue around the Z. The hotkey for rotating is R, so pressing that first of all will rotate based upon the views orientation and if we press an axis we'll rotate around that axis based on the world axis in this case. Another quick word about axis then, on the header are various transform orientations and at the moment it's set to use the global or world axis. If we rotate our object 45 degrees around say X, I can do that by pressing R to rotate X to constrain to the X axis and typing in 45 on the keyboard. Or if I hold down control and use the mouse to rotate, it'll snap to five degree increments. We can see the manipulators still represent the world. So if we rotate the object around the Z axis, it looks like this. It might be useful then to be able to use the object's local axis for rotation in this case. In order to do this, we can choose local as our transform orientation. You'll see now the manipulators align with the object's local axis as we've rotated the object. And indeed, using the manipulators to rotate around the local Z axis works like that. To use the hotkeys for this orientation, first press say R to rotate, Z to constrain to the Z axis, we still be using the world axis here. Pressing Z again, we'll then use the selected axis, in this case, the local. This works for scale as well. So again, there are manipulators available for scale. So we can scale along the object's local Z axis using this transform orientation, or pressing S to scale, pressing Z once, we'll still use the world axis, pressing Z again, we'll use the object's local axis. So it's worth noting actually that even with the orientation set to global, pressing the axis twice will use the local. However, it's useful sometimes visually to have the manipulators reflect that. One quick note about rotating is that if we press the R key twice, we can enter this sort of trackball rotation mode, which allows us to roughly orientate an object along different axes all at once, which is useful sometimes. 
So there's a lot to take in here, I know, but don't worry too much. The takeaway should be to try and get used to using the hotkeys. So remember G to grab, S to scale, and R to rotate. Remember you can constrain to an axis using the appropriate key, so X, Y, or Z. And after locating an option like delete in the tools region, try and remember the hotkey. Keep an eye out for them in the menus uh, and also see what other things you can try to find in there.